Hey adventurers, Jacob here from Local Adventure, and today we're gonna to be talking about the best cheap vlogging camera. Now this is a lot of cameras to check out all in one video, so we're gonna break it up into a few different videos and check them out based on categories. That way you can kind of compare them apples to apples. We're gonna be looking at some action cams, camcorders, larger cameras, but mostly compact cameras, and break them down based on price. Now when I say cheap, I know that's kind of relative, but all of these cameras are under $500. In these reviews, we're not gonna really talk about the technical aspects of the cameras or the specs of them, but really talk about how does it feel? What is it like to use? Use, and they give you side-by-side -side comparisons of the footage right out of camera so that you can decide for yourself what you like the best. Now I'm sure you've heard it before, but the best camera is the camera that you have with you. We get the question all the time, what's the best camera I should buy? And my first question is always, what's your budget? Usually I suggest writing down what you want to accomplish with the camera. Some people only want to do photos, some people want to do video and photos, other people only want to focus on video. Then compare the cameras that fit within your budget and see which one fits your needs the best. So with that said, let's get started. Today we're gonna to be checking out the higher range of the compact cameras, which means anything between $400 to $500. The cheapest of the three is this Canon at $429 is the PowerShot G9X Mark II. Next up at $477 is the Nikon Coolpix A1000. And the most expensive at $498 is the Panasonic DMC LX10. All right, starting off with the Canon, we have the camera, the battery came in the box. You have the little wrist hand thing. I keep calling it a lanyard, but I don't think that's what it technically is. And then an external battery charger. As you guys know, I prefer these over the ones that you have to plug your camera in just because if I have an extra battery, I can be charging that while still using the current camera. The camera does come in silver as well, but I got it in black. Now, the first thing I notice is it is called the G9X. Now, if you've done any research on vlogging, cameras you've probably seen the Canon G7X pop up on a lot of lists because it's one of the most popular vlogging cameras out there. I had one of the original versions of that camera and really loved it. I just put it through the ringer and it eventually broke. Now some quick stats about this. It shoots at 1080p at 60 frames per second. Now for those of you guys who don't know any of the technical stuff, 1080p is pretty much what you would be standardly watching on YouTube. The frames per second lets you know if you can shoot it in slow-mo or not. At 60 frames per second, you can shoot about slow-mo at half speed. So rather than going like this, I'd be going like, Man, that's smooth. This is getting old, right? It shoots 30 minutes uninterrupted and the lens is about 28 millimeters to 84 millimeters. So not a whole ton of zoom on this. Two of the biggest features I look at are the mic and the screen. Unfortunately, there is no external mic hookup to this. So you would have to use a lav system like I'm doing now, which isn't a bad way to do it. It's just one extra thing to think about. I use a lav that connects directly to my phone. And the screen, having a flip screen is nice to have when you're vlogging, just because if you don't have it, you're gonna have to kind of guess if you're in frame, in focus or whatever else you want to capture is in there with you. This camera is only on the back, no flip screen, so we'll have to do a little bit of guessing. A nice touch is you can actually zoom with the lens ring like this, Ooh. but it's not super necessary. It's a little bit faster than having to use the button and actually waiting, but it's just more of a feel to it. In terms of holding on to it, there is some grip on the front and a grip for your thumb in the back, but there isn't anything that really sticks out or protrudes to let you really hold on to tightly. Plus the button system is pretty simple on this camera. Just at a first glance without checking out the actual footage, we checked out this Canon on the last video and I would actually say based on the features and everything, this one seems like a better option already. Although this camera is smaller, fits nicely in the pocket without it being too cumbersome. Next up, let's check out this Nikon Coolpix A1000 inside the box. You have the camera, you have the battery, which is already in here. You have the charger, which is actually pretty big. And then you have the hand secure wrist thingy. Now just holding onto this camera, it's big. It's a hefty camera in comparison to this one. You can see the size difference, it makes a pretty big difference and it's even uh, got a lot more weight to it. Now talking specs, it shoots at 1080p, 60 frames per second, just like this Canon, but also shoots 4K at 30 frames a second. I've talked about this in videos before, 4K is a nice option if you're trying to shoot really high-end videos, but what you're typically watching on YouTube is gonna be 1080, just like this video. Plus editing 4K is typically more cumbersome, especially if you just have a regular computer. I'm editing on a laptop, even though it's a MacBook Pro, it works really hard when I'm trying to do anything with 4K. It shoots 29 minutes uninterrupted, and the lens is equivalent to about a 24 millimeter to 840 millimeter, which is a lot of zoom. Now there is no mic hookup on this either, but there is a flip screen. And unlike some of the other flip screens, it flips down. I don't know if I like that or not. I feel like 
when I'm trying to hold the camera. I like to hold the bottom of the camera, but then my hand blocks it, so I don't know. There is a pop-up flash on here. There's some interesting features on this because you can zoom based on the top like you normally would, but there's also a button on the lens itself where you can zoom here. Plus there's a viewfinder on here that can be accessed based on the sensor, so you can just bring your face up to it and it'll automatically switch, or there's a button where you can actually select it. They made good use of the space being a bigger camera. There's a little protrusion here with nice rubber to hold on to with a little thumb holder and a decent number of buttons to select what you need to select. The last camera we're gonna be looking at today is the Panasonic Lumix. We have the camera, we have the battery, which I've already charged and put inside. You got the charger right here, and then you have the, I think I saw the name of this on here hand strap. They're called hand straps. So ignore every other time I've said lanyard or wrist thing. It's a hand strap. Now let's talk some quick specs on this one before we take these out to test. This shoots at 1080p at 60 frames per second and 4k at 30 frames per second. So it gives you a nice wide range of options. It shoots 30 minutes uninterrupted and the lens gets you from 24 millimeters to 72 millimeters. Now there is no mic plug-in on this either, but the screen does flip, which is nice. And I like it. I think I do like it flipping on top better than I do on the bottom. Yeah, I like it on top better. There's a pop-out flash and it's got just some nice feeling to it. This is a really heavy camera. Compared to this Nikon, which is bigger than it, this feels at least a time and a half, I feel like, of the weight. Not that heavy necessarily means better, but you could just tell it's built solidly. This feature probably isn't as handy in video as it is in photos, but you can actually select the aperture on a ring that's built in right here, which is really nice touch. There are also a ton of buttons on here to let you select different uh, settings on your camera. The downside is that the buttons end up being smaller because of that. So if you have really fat fingers or big fingers, it's gonna be hard to get those precision hits. All right, so let's take these three out for a test. Just for the sake of being able to compare them equally, I'm gonna shoot them all at 1080p, and we're gonna set them at the movie setting, recording whatever auto setting that's at, and just use the onboard mic so you can compare the sounds. Since we are still in quarantine, I'm not straying very far from where I live. I have this crazy contraption, and hopefully not many people look at me too weird, but let's test them out. All right, guys, so we're walking by the side of the street. There should be plenty of cars coming by. Of course, right now there are none, but just want to test the mic with all that ambient noise. Plus, you're gonna see sun directly on my face right now. Probably should have put some sunblock on, but you'll see how well it exposes to that. Uh, if it's overexposing or anything of that sort, I'm gonna flip around in a minute so that you can see it from the backside. And by backside, I mean sun behind me. Okay, so that was some car noise. There should be some more cars coming around soon. In the meantime, we're gonna flip around, see how it adjusts to the light, give it a second. Now, I can't tell if I'm totally in frame or focus on all three of these. I think they are. The Lumix, I have the screen flipped so I can see it. The Nikon with the setup right now, I can't see it because it flips down. And the Canon doesn't have a flip. We are gonna try the zoom out. I am trying to find a point that I can zoom in on and test these. Let's go for, in the really far distance, there's a tree right on the side of the lake. I'm gonna zoom in as far as I can on those. That's the cannon. And we're going to test stabilization by running down the stairs. Forward facing. And back up and you can see how it handles focusing as I am moving. Next up, I'm gonna shoot some B-roll, some nice, hopefully pretty images that, you know, you would just normally throw over music to fill in some of that time in between things, kind of like this.
lastly, we're gonna test out some low light. This is our bathroom. We have one light on in the bedroom out here. That's the only light that's going in. So you can see how it handles that. Also, it's an echoey room. So if it seems, I don't know, very boomy or anything like that, you could tell it's distorting it. I don't know how pixelated it is right now. Uh, we're also going to I'll turn one more light on just so it's not as dark. There you go. A little bit more light, still kind of dark. What do you think? All right, now that you've been able to see and compare, hopefully you have something in mind on which one you like the best. Based on my opinion, I'm gonna go ahead and knock out this Canon. I think if I wanted to get a Canon, I would have gotten that other one that we had talked about just for the sake of flip screen and some of the additional features on there. Between the two of these, there's only a $15 difference. I personally would go with the Panasonic Lumix just because the camera feels substantial. It feels nice and high quality. Plus, I prefer the flip screen up to the top and I feel like there's some features on there that would help in photos and I know I'll be taking some photos with it as well. Be sure to click in the links below if you wanna read more about each of these cameras. Special thanks to B&H for sending them to us and letting us check them out. If you have any further questions, chat with one of them. They're experts and they know a ton about this stuff. I've also linked to our blog post which compares all of the cameras that we're reviewing in this series, so be sure to check that out. And stay tuned for more videos. Thanks guys.